Hi guys, this is Mirek from Phantom. Let me show you what we've been working on for a while. Phantom is something like uh, an operating system for augmented reality. So it defines certain design principles, it gives you two-dimensional and three-dimensional user interface, uh, it helps you load and distribute assets, it helps you run your applications, and so on and so on. Uh, I should tell you that you know, I'm using this clicker to control all this. There won't be any you know, hand waving in front of the camera. That's really a ridiculous way of controlling a computer. No one should use it, it's just holding the whole industry back. We're working on something much better than this. This is a temporary and sort of alternative input system, but it works for now. Now, we can see some things around us here, such as these animated wallpapers. And the thing is that, you know, you can easily change what they're showing. And the thing is that these are in fact just animated GIFs that we're able to load in and show them to you. Once it's loaded, there we go. And the point of using GIF, it doesn't have to be a GIF, it can be JPEG or video or whatever. The point of using something like that is to make the content creation as easy as possible for authors. We want to be reusing stuff for this new platform, not reinventing the wheel. There are also some 3D objects uh, around us, such as a planet. We can bombard. We have an astronaut there. We have a horse which responds to commands. Bumps into walls. It's not very smart horse yet, but that's not the point. We have things like this. It can respond to cursor. It can show us some live data. And let me show you how this all works together. So to do anything in AR, to be able to align objects with real world, you need a map, and you need a precise map. So let's enter the builder mode or builder app and show you, let me show you how this works. So we have this map of this whole room that consists of certain shapes and objects. We have these meshes for more complex shapes. And these meshes were created by using a depth sensor. This is pretty standard these days. Uh, you've seen it on other platforms. Quite often you can do it continuously, if the hardware allows. But today I'd like to talk about something slightly different. Our main aim is augmented reality outdoors, or large scale. So we're thinking and talking about mobile devices. And just think about trying to map your city, or trying to map a large landscape, or a large building. Uh, when it comes to any sensor, you're limited by its range, you're limited, when, it, when, you, when we're talking about infrared sensors, it doesn't certainly work on direct sunlight, you're limited by materials and other things. So when you'd like to, for instance, map a building, large building, we, you can do something like this. You can shoot a ray and change perspective slightly basically shoot another way. This way we've just created the vertex in the space and if you do this for a while I mean it can be definitely enhanced, it's just a little trick you can get quite a few vertices you can actually even use the depth sensor to assist you, but that's not the point of this demo. And when you have the vertices, you can easily turn them into a quad or into a mesh. Then you can tell the system how it should treat the, the mesh, uh, whether it should respond to collisions or how it should be rendered and so on. And this is how this whole room was mapped. We're actually getting better results when it comes to sharp edges than than we're getting with, uh, with automated meshing. Anyway, that's the map. Uh, the other thing is how these 
things actually work as objects, how the applications actually interact with the environment and each other. So, for instance, these two elements are separate objects. Uh, interestingly, let me talk about this one first, because this one is just a website. To prove it, you can go to this URL here and see all the code it took to build something like this. It, it actually is showing us live data uh, that it gets from a public API. And this thing is transparent and it's built in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Uh, it makes it extremely, the point of this is that, that it's extremely easy for anyone to build a widget, a data widget like this, or something like, I don't know, advertising that will be shown somewhere uh, uh, in, as a part of the AR experience. It's basically the same technology that's used to render this web view. This is, this is a live website, obviously. You can scroll it, you can click stuff, you can go back and forward. But, I mean, you can use it as a web browser, but the interactions are not really there yet. We really need that new input system to be able to do more than just gaze and click, because that's not really so much better than, uh, well, what you see here. It's that that's probably as, as much as you can do. And you want to be able to do much more with this new technology. So this is just a showcase. It will get more work. Now back to the telephone. Uh, the panel and the telephone are two separate objects. They are independent of each other and they are connected. Every object in Phantom can publish certain events that it can uh, respond to and it, can, and it publishes certain actions it can perform. So in our case, the telephone answers to cursor enter and exit by starting and stopping the ringing and when the user clicks it it toggles visibility of this panel here and that's all it takes really to build something like this so you need uh, a URL for the view and you this object and then, then you connect them together now the planet here on top of the functionality it has on its own can also have some interactions <coughs> so this is just a quick example I want to tell it to play a welcome tune when I get closer to it and I want it to stop as I get further again. Back to the play mode. It still works, but when we get closer, this is what it does. As I get further, it stops. So let me just turn it off real quick. It's quite annoying as I walk around. There we go. Now, I'd like to show you one more last example. This particular space, part of this particular part of the room, has not been mapped at all. So let's do it real quick using the automated meshing. We can limit the area we will be meshing and we can limit the resolution, change the resolution accordingly, which gives us different performance. Now you've seen this probably a couple of times on different platforms. So there's no need to spend so much time on it. But It is quite CPU intense, to be honest. There are specialized chips that, for instance, are part of the HoloLens that allow them to perform continuous meshing on the background, which is something we don't do yet. We, we're fine with stationary maps for now. But that can certainly change. Now, as I was saying, there are limitations to what we can do with infrared. For instance, this carpet here absorbs the infrared light. So the sensor never gets any reflections and therefore can't really... Well, sometimes it does. But most of the 
infrared gets absorbed, so it doesn't get mapped. Now, this is good enough. Let's turn it into an internal mesh. There we go. That should do. Now, I will add another object. This is one of the building blocks we have here. This is really just a simple, stupid teleport. And its only purpose is to create another object. Let me place it here, scale it down a little. There we go, that's good. But it doesn't do much on its own. So let's add some controls. We'll add a button to the scene. As you can see, as I'm trying to turn it around, I'm really hitting what's possible with, with case control. But that's why we're building this new uh, controller. Oops, I didn't want that. Let's add one more button. Another thing is that it's really, I should say, suboptimal to try to control something in AR by pushing virtual buttons. That's, that's just stupid. What you want is effective user interface, not buttons, trying to mimic physical buttons. But this is just you know, for the sake of, uh, of the demo. So I want to tell the button, when it's clicked, to tell the teleport to call the teleport random method. And I want it also to play a boing sound, that's one of its own actions that it can perform. And then I want to tell this other button to call, when it's clicked, to call the cleanup method of the very same teleport. And that will do just one thing, it will delete all the, all the stuff that it's created. And that's it, we're all set. So, Back to the play mode, and when we click this button, we get a horse. We get another horse. It's getting pretty messy, so you can clean up. And oh yeah, there are some kittens also. Clean up. And that's it basically, that's how you build interactions in Phantom. There's gonna be more, this is just the beginning, obviously. So let me show you one more thing, but for that I need to take you somewhere else. Yeah, no, that was a cheap trick, but yeah, it totally works outdoors. You can imagine the possibilities, this is kind of the point of what we're trying to do here. There's a map built in the system, so we know where we are, and we can do things like this, for instance. Like a silly shooter game. You get the picture. Now the last thing I wanted to show you is this suspicious sphere here and the point is that you know there is something in it and you have to walk in to see what it is so let's do just that as you can see the snow is gone When we step out, we're back where we were, the snow is here, the cold is here, but this can be somewhere, you know, history on historical landmarks, you can step in and see your city hundreds of years ago. 
and some other things as well. So we call this a video capsule. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. So that's all for now. There's gonna be more, but yeah, bye now. <laughs>